One of the most frequent questions I get asked when people are building a brewing system is what controller should I use? Should I build one? Should I purchase one? In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Brew Commander, how to set it up, and what my thoughts are on it. How's it going? My name's Brian. I'd like to welcome you to another video. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about electric brewing, see how-to videos and product reviews just like this one, consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget to click that bell so you won't miss a video when it comes out. Full disclosure, as with all my reviews, Blickman did send me the Brew Commander for review. I did not purchase it. This is a really long video and there's a lot to cover, so I'm not going to go through too many things on the details of the unit. It does use a NEMA 630 plug for both the element as well as power for the unit. You also do need a 15 amp or regular household plug for the pump control that's integrated into the unit. It does have a touch screen. It does have the ability to be used on a table or on a rack system and the rack is not included. That would be an additional option that you'd have to purchase separately. As far as capability goes, the unit is advertised will handle up to 7200 watt element on a third party system and the up to the 5000 watt Blickman boil coil. And that's what I'm using in the system that I use to kind of set this up and display. I've got a G2 20 gallon kettle and I've got a Riptide pump as well as the Brew Commander all hooked up. I did use the hole where the brewmometer normally is in order to put the probe in. The probe that it comes with has about a 15 foot cord on it. It also does come with an extension cord to hook the unit up to power. Now because the video is so long, I'm going to actually go ahead and put a timestamp over here to show you if you want to go back and, and automatically jump to wherever you want to view in the video. I'm going to break it out into sections as far as the setup goes and the different features. I'll also have links in the description down below for time code stamps as well as all the products that I'm talking about in the video. Let's jump into taking a look at the menu system on it and we'll go through all that and I'll come back and give you my final thoughts after we take a look. All right, so let's go ahead and turn the unit on. And you get a couple audible beeps. Brew Commander, let's get brewing. And now it brings you to the home screen. So you can see from the home screen that the current water temperature is 79.2 degrees. The set point is currently at 122. Power is at 100%. And the timer is at zero. So I don't have anything running at this point. And because of that, uh, it's not showing anything. There's a couple things you can do from this main screen. One of them is adjust the power for the percentage and that is when the system is in a PWM mode. The system does start in manual mode so you can adjust the temperature to whatever you want manually from the screen in the beginning. The timer, that is controlled by either the mash or boil timer internally. Uh, you can go auto which allows you to raise to this temperature and then hold it there or you can just go directly to on and then it automatically sets to boil at 100 percent power now you'll see when i was in the auto mode there the display turned blue and that means that the temperature reading is below what the set point is so until it gets up to within one degree of 122 degrees say 121 it'll turn black and then should it overshoot the 122 it would actually turn red if it goes a degree above so we'll get into that further in the menu the other options on the main menu are the pump you can turn that on that is a virtual switch that will turn on the pump and begin circulating your water so let's turn all those things off and let's dive into the menu system so the first thing you're presented with in the menu system is the mash boil and timer let's take a look at the mash first so in the mash section, you can have up to nine different profiles of mashes that you use. In this one, I just made up a dummy profile, maybe for like a wheat beer or whatever in there. Uh, how you adjust all of these settings is you hit select and it will allow you to adjust the temperature. So I can adjust this from 122, say to 120, and then hit enter. Then it gives you the time and then you can enter the time in there. And then you just continue on through each one of those options until you get to the end. And then it sets back to what the profile is. Going back to the menu screen, the boil. Okay, so on your boil timer, what you're going to do is you're actually going to select the BL is the boil length. So if you're doing a 60 minute boil, you'll put that in. And then if your first edition is at 60 minutes, you're gonna put 60 minutes there. 
then if your other edition, let's say that's at 15 minutes, oops, let me uh, delete that, put 15 minutes in there. Uh, and then let's say the next one's five minutes and so on. It will actually keep track of the boil length as well as notify you when you need to put these additions in. Uh, after you hit the start timer, it'll say to add the first ingredient and then it'll begin counting down from there and then it will tell you at whatever intervals you set it at to add the ingredients and then when the boil is complete you'll get a message that says boil complete. Going back home, go into the timer. That's simply just a timer that is independent of every other timer in there and that for whatever you would want to use it for. If there's some particular thing that you want to do then you could set it for that. Now getting into the advanced menu or the settings menu here is your start delay. Hit the basic settings, select the delay, choose however many hours you want, hit the home button, and then you're going to see the delay shows up there. You'll want to set in whatever your strike temperature is. So let's say it's 150, 156. You're going to hit enter there. You're going to put the power on to 100%. And then it will actually not turn on the power or the element until it reaches that four hour mark. Once that timer is over, it will heat it up to that set point there and then you can proceed with your mash steps and everything as normal in the controller. Now what the set point alarm is, that will actually notify you when you are getting close to your temperature. Say so you could set that for 120 degrees like I did at 115, it will notify me that I'm getting close to my set point. There's also a out of range notification. So if the mash or whatever temperature you have it set for, goes above two degrees above its set point it will actually give you an audible alarm as well next is the audible alarm which actually selects the audible part of the alarm that notifies you of these two options here now if you leave that off there things will still turn red if they go above um, it will also show you that you know the the temperature is going to display correctly on the front as well um, this is where you can change it from celsius to fahrenheit the next option is calibration. Now this shouldn't have to be used, but they did include it in the event that the probe that comes with the brew commander is off by a few tenths of a degree or whatever. I would suggest that if you want to change this, you want to make sure that you have a known temperature device that you know is calibrated and is exactly the, the temperature that you want it to be. Now this is not where you would do an offset. There is another place in the menu for that. So this is just for calibration for the, the temperature probe itself. All right, going back into the menu, we'll go into the advanced menu. And that menu is, uh, this is where we get into some more advanced features. Now the mash heat rate, the way that the system works, if you do a step mash, or you want to raise your mash temperature in between different steps, the system doesn't actually wait until you get to the mash temperature in order to start the timer. What the system does is it actually predicts how long it's going to take for that mash rise or a ramp is what they call it. In order to dial this function in, you'll need to brew on your system a couple of times using the device. And if you find that your raise or your ramp in temperature is occurring quicker than what the setting is. So if you're reaching, let's say you start at 120 and you reach 150 before the timer, the ramp timer goes off, you can write those figures down and you can adjust this. If you raise the heat rate on this particular setting here, it will make the timer go faster in the ramp setting. If you lower the figure, then it will actually make the timer go slower. It'll actually think that the temperature doesn't rise as quickly. The rims offset, this is where you would adjust for your rims heater or a Herm system. And the offset basically is the difference between whatever the liquid is being measured by the probe versus what the actual mash temperature is. And there's some recommendations on that that we'll get into here in just a little bit. Uh, rims protect is another feature. And what that is, is basically when you start your mash in a rim system, if you, for any reason, turn the pump off, it will actually kill the heat to the element. And that is a protection so that you don't scorch the mash in your rims tube. It's not really necessary for a Herm system, but if you're doing a rim system or even a brew in a bag system, that would be a possible option that you'd want to uh, enact. The ignition delay is for gas driven systems, propane, natural gas, that type of thing. Uh, the cycle time, five seconds, that is a setting once it reaches the 
set point temperature or within a degree of the set point temperature, it will begin to cycle the element every five seconds to attempt to hold that temperature. All right, now the steady state offset, that is for an adjustment. If you find that after you've heated your mash or your brew in a bag or your rim system or whatever, and you find that the controller is still a few degrees or even a few tenths of a degree below what your set point is, you can actually go into this steady state offset and adjust that. So if, you're, if your HLT is 147.7 degrees and you want it to be 148, you can add 0.2 degrees here and that will actually bump up the amount of heat and attempt to match the setting that you want it to be. And that will give you the offset. This is not to be confused with the rims offset. This is more of a steady state. So once you reach the actual temperature that you want, if it's a little bit below or even a little bit above, which probably wouldn't happen, but if it's a little bit below, you can actually adjust that here. Factory reset is basically that will reset the entire system all the way back to its original state from when it was purchased. All right, so let's run through some of the recommended setup options for the rim system and herm system. Now, according to Blickman's information, they are saying that in the advanced menu for a rim setup, and this is either with a rims tube or their actual rims rocket, they want to make a couple of adjustments in here. And one of them is in the basic area, and that is the set point alarm. They're saying to set that to six degrees and then the out of range set that to eight degrees Fahrenheit. Now in the advanced settings, they say to leave the, make the rims offset uh, two degrees and understand that these are all just basic guidelines and you'll have to dial this in with your individual system based on your own hardware. Uh, and then the uh, cycle time, they're saying to set that to three seconds. So basically that's gonna trigger the element to heat a little, to come on more often. That way to try to maintain your temperature a little bit better. And then the control band, they are saying to set that to 10 degrees. The other thing that they definitely recommend with the rim system especially is that you turn the rims protect on. And that would be your basic settings for your rim setup. All right, so let's take a look at the Herm setup. Basically everything is going to be about the same. The only thing you're going to change is in that mash heat rate there, you're going to lower that down to one degree per minute. Now, again, as I said before, you may want to adjust that as you go. Uh, and then certainly the other thing you have to look at too is the rims offset and you don't let the name rims fool you. Again, this is just an offset for what your hot liquor tank is versus what your mash is. So you want to have some sort of measurement in your mash to be able to tell what the current mash temperature is versus what the HLT. Generally, there is a couple degree loss between the two of those, um, between when what your mash, or your mash temperature is and what your hot liquor tank temperature is. So again, this is where you're gonna dial that in so that your reading on the screen on the Brew Commander is the same reading as what your mash temperature is. And that's pretty much about all you need to adjust for the Herm system at this point. Now we'll take a look at how some of these functions and features work. I'll go ahead and get the water heated up in the kettle here and we'll take a look and see, show you what some of those things look like when they occur. Now one quick thing I did want to show you, uh, when you get all your parameters in there in your mash, I'm going to heat up to 100, hold it for a minute, then go to 120 and hold that for a minute. The mash timer, you really shouldn't start that until you reach your strike temperature. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it and reset it but you need to wait until you get your water up to your strike temperature before you actually go into the menu and hit your mash uh, mash profile your mash timer start so that's just one thing you need to know whenever it doesn't wait until it gets to the temperature it actually only starts when you tell it to start and you should be at your your strike temperature and mashed in before you actually start the timer okay so a couple things i want to show you here it's going to have an alarm here shortly there's the alarm saying that we're within five degrees of our set point. Once we get close to the set point of 100 degrees, you'll start to see that the heating element will start to go on and off. It'll start to come on and off, showing that it's actually attempting to hold the temperature. Um, it's raising pretty quick with the 5,000 watt element and nine gallons of water. So you'll see here in just a second that it'll start there. It did its first flash and then it'll start to slow down. So it's trying to hit the 100 degree set point without overshooting. This is where the algorithm starts to take over. 
and once it gets within the range you'll see it starts to turn black which means that we're nearing our range of the heat and then you'll see that the heating element is turning on and off in an attempt to raise it slowly and gently so that we don't overshoot our 100 degrees. Once we get to our 100 degrees I'll be back and I'll show you the mash timer starting and we'll do that next after it reaches the set point. All right, so we've reached our set point and it's been hovering around 99.9 .9 to 100 degrees for a little while now. I mean, it's, it, you can't get much more accurate than 0.1 degrees. And that's without any kind of uh, calibration. There's no auto-tune mode or anything like that. It's just using the algorithm that's built into the system. So let's go ahead and go into the mash. We're gonna start our timer, hit home. And then this will show us, we're holding our mash temperature at 100 degrees for one minute it just went to 100 degrees and that's just fluctuating back and forth now when this gets to zero it will actually show the ramp timer and i'll be back in just a minute once that uh, occurs and show you what that looks like all right so our timer is about to reach zero and we got an audible alarm saying that it's ramping up so you can see the ramp temperature and according to what the system knows it's saying that it's going to take 19.5 19 minutes and 50 seconds to get up to 120 degrees it's turned the heat on 100 percent and then if you remember in our settings it was one degree per minute for mash is what i set it to so it's thinking that it'll take one degree per minute for the raise in this scenario we have here it's going to reach 120 degrees long before we get 19 minutes elapsed as you can see it's raising pretty quickly but that is with just water so in the herms situation that it's set for it's taking into account the heat exchange difference between the HLT and the wart going through the, the coil and how long it's going to take for the actual temperature in the mash to reach that 120 degrees. Okay, so I want to demonstrate for you the, yeah, it reached, when the mash timer is over, it does that mash complete message and then you have to hit the check mark to move on. I wanted to demonstrate the rims protect. Uh, just as I said before in the settings, I have the rims protection turned on. And so what happens is, uh, I'm going to turn this to on so that the actual boil, the element comes on. So you see the heating element here is on. And if I turn the pump off with the rims protection on, you'll find that it turns everything off. So that is a great feature of this system. It will definitely prevent you from scorching your mash if for some reason you turn the pump off. Let me show you real quick how the timer works. You go into the timer. Put whatever you want. I'm going to put one minute in there. Once I set the time, I'll hit play. Go back to the home screen. You'll see a timer there, which is independent of the actual boil timer itself. And now we can see the timer is reaching zero. And it just gives us an audible alarm with nothing visual on the screen at all. It's just an audible alarm for that particular timer. My initial thoughts on the Blickman Brew Commander are that I would really like to upgrade my current control system to the Brew Commander. Actually, two of them for a Herm system. There are a couple of things that are a little caveats to it though. You would need to have either two 30 amp GFCI circuits or one single 60 amp GFI circuit with a some sort of a control or plug box in order to plug both of the units in. The other thing that you would need as well would be that 120 volt power to run the pumps. So there's a couple of little things there that need to be considered as far as I'm concerned. There are a couple of other concerns that I have with it. I wish that there was a better way to hook up the, the probe. There is a thermal well that they do sell to go into a kettle so you can remove it. I just I wish there was a way to leave the, the probe in the kettle and disconnect it from the probe. Minor inconvenience, really, just something that I've always been used to, and so that's why I kind of have that consideration with it. The other thing is that with control systems that use a solid-state relay, there is most of the time a probability that if the SSR fails, it fails in the on state, basically meaning that the circuit would be closed and power would be going to the heating element. There is not any kind of a lighting indicator showing that power is flowing through the circuit to go to the element. So there is a chance at some point if the SSR failed that you could turn the unit on and it would be powering your element right from the start and possibly fry your element. The other thing that some of you may be considering is some kind of connectivity. The unit does not have any kind of Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connectivity or anything like that. Uh, Blickman designed it with the intention that you're going to be in the brew house doing the brewing 
uh, at the same time while everything's going on. So you wouldn't really need any kind of remote connectivity for it. It does have the advanced or the delayed start. So you could set it up to have your water ready whenever you want to brew, which is a plus. One other thing that Blickman has designed to work in conjunction with this unit is more relay modules. So you can add multiple relay units to this to run more elements than just the single element that the brew commander is intended to run. So you could add multiples of those up to as many as you have circuits for and power, you know, one barrel, two barrel system. In conclusion, I think it's a great device, great design. There's a couple little quirks there that's not a huge ordeal, but uh, I definitely think it's it's a viable option for anybody doing brew in a bag, rims, and once you get past the hurdles with the multiple units with the Herms, I think it's definitely a viable option for Herms control. And, you know, let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on it. We certainly appreciate you watching the video. If you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up. This has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We'll see you on the next video.